Uh, so our guest is going to join us in a little bit. Uh, we right. we have some notes we could get through before that. Uh, obviously, if anyone else has chat to chat about, uh, do it. Uh, but we also have Tim's video we're going to watch through. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, yeah. Should we, we do that one first? Of... Yeah, that's yeah. Uh, a good idea, isn't it? Mm -hmm. yeah. um, first, we need... Did, did we have our tweet up? Let me make sure I got that up. Yep, I tweeted it. Oh, uh, hell yeah. I'll Thank you. Drop you we got a tweet? Tim's video oh, my as well. God. As today. you can tell, chat, we're a really organized operation here. <laughs> uh, that's why the FBI uh, is paying us so much money to that's run this That's right! Stream. Uh, because because we do it we do it better than anybody else. That's right. Um, right. Uh, yeah, Nicole, I've linked you the thing okay. in Shadowy Cabal. This is oh yeah, I love this video actually. I think we watched it's this a really good a while video. ago. Mm. It's it's a Tim video chat. It's one of Conquest of Dreads videos, so you know it's going to be all That's cool good. and sexy and shit. <laughs> Basically, everything you're not chat. It's going to be that. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Wow. <laughs> Chat's crying right now. Look at them. <laughs> crying. Crying. Weeping. Crying. Coping and seething. <laughs> seething, right. coping, crying, shitting, <laughs> pissing. Coming. Yeah, it's all Coming. happening. <laughs> okay. It's a tidal wave of bodily fluids in chat. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Tim, you got any remarks to introduce the video or should we just drive in? Um, yeah, I don't know. I um, I made this. This is a while back now. Um, I kind of made it when there was, yeah, there was a lot of, you know, like kind of protests kicking off around the world. Um, I think, I can't remember if I made it before or after the whole like George Floyd, George Floyd stuff kicked off. I think it was maybe after, I can't remember, but there was other stuff happening as well. Um, and I kept seeing a lot of stuff, you know, on social media, people talking about like, oh, we were down here and we got killed or whatever. And other people being like, what does that mean or whatever? And I was kind of um, like, uh, this was around the time I wanted to pivot my channel and my content in general, just to being more towards um, less like kind of like media analysis stuff and more like kind of real world kind of like things that might be, um, you know, like things that might be a lot more kind of pertinent with, you know what's going on not that that other stuff is less pertinent or whatever like that but it's just like where i want to take my focus um and uh, my, my yeah. video about the matrix sequels is pretty important to the political climate <laughs> yeah. going on right now i <laughs> don't want to leave that unsaid um <laughs> like, I, I just felt like you know like and there's plenty of people that were doing like kind of more stuff like that i mean like yourself that were kind of um nailing it in a way that i didn't feel like i could <laughs> so i kind of shifted more over this stuff um so yeah so this was the first i think kind of yeah the first movie that i oh the first video that i started making more like um focusing on things that like you know like you might be like oh shit what is a kettle or something like that and it would come up and then mm -hmm. you know kind of um something short it's only a couple minutes that you could just get in there and just like learn about basically like this is what it is these are some things you can do it's not like exhaustive there's stuff that i definitely thought about afterwards and i was like oh i should have mentioned this or even people in the comments brought up other cool stuff as well mm -hmm. so we'll talk about that later i guess probably once oh, it gets here mm -hmm. but um but, yeah uh, uh that's that's it as a quick check-in uh chat before we watch this video the video is called how to survive and thrive in a hypothetical dysto hypothetical dystopian street battle kettling how many of you know what kettling is don't google it how many of you press one if you know what kettling is and press zero if you do not know what kettling is uh i'm just um i just i, I know i know one <laughs> right, guys i can tell you i know <laughs> okay so everyone so else though right you can't, we can't do we can't do decimal points. You know, <laughs> chat's just always you trying to get credit for for, you for don't just point showing up. Three know what it is. That's not <laughs> okay. So it looks like yeah, learn twenty twenty. So it looks like uh, I don't know, like third thirty forty percent of you don't know what it is, which is like a nice decent chunk of you that will be now exposed yeah. to this idea and will be. There um, are other names delivered. for it as well. So yeah, can yeah, I yeah. can I just ask a second one to chat? Sure. Uh, zero if you don't know, and one if you do know uh, any kind of plan to deal with te with cattling. Because that's so, what we're going to see in the yeah. future now. If you can't, do you know what to do with in the case of being kettled? If you don't, press zero. If you do, press one. I this is funny. I'm, I'm recognizing some people in chat, and it, some of them are people who I know about their like uh, kind of street cred with organizing and stuff. And I'm like seeing them hit one. And I'm like, yeah, of course you fucking do. <laughs> <laughs> fucking bragging. Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> 
No competing. We're not competing. <laughs> Look at these grass yeah. touches. I <laughs> can't believe it. Uh, Pavement touches is probably it. Akira gave me some ideas on how to deal with kettling. What, using your brain to like yeah, yeah, blow yeah. up a tank? Turn into just a big flesh and just, and just, just uh, everything uh, in town. <laughs> I literally, okay, that's mad because I literally watched Akira last night. Never put on my motorbike with my lid pipe. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, that'll do it. Mm. <laughs> Beating up a clown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, let's, All right. Let's, let's let's get into the video. Enough malarkey, as yeah. my hero Joe Biden would say. Enough of, mm. with the malarkey. All right. Jesus. <laughs> Kia ora, Tefano. Welcome to my new mini series. How to survive and thrive in a hypothetical dystopian street battle. In these videos, we'll be going over practical advice a hypothetical citizen might need in a riot situation or a general state of civil unrest. We'll be going over plenty of different topics, but I'll be keeping each video short and focused in an effort to make them easier to navigate. The first subject we're going to cover is one of the most common tactics employed by police in large scale protests. It's called kettling. This is a technique everyone should become familiar with, as it's used by police and military all over the planet. Also referred to as a box-in, pocket, or trap and detain by modern police and military, it's an evolution of a timeless military strategy used all over the planet, most notoriously probably in World War II, in which the Germans called it the Kiel und Kessel tactic. Kittling is when a group of people are corralled into an enclosed area and held there whether by physical barriers like pre-existing walls and terrain, temporary barriers like fences, or a wall of hypothetical state-sanctioned stormtroopers. Once inside the area designated as a kettle, the official law enforcement position is generally that protesters will be released in small groups to slowly defuse and de-escalate the situation, like a valve releasing pressure from a kettle. But in practice, this really happens. Instead, we often see police slowly applying pressure and shrinking the kettled area to force an escalation or to enact mass arrest. While a group remains kettled, they can also be denied access to resources like water, bathrooms, and medical attention, which is why in many places, incidents of kettling have later been found to be unlawful. So it's worth knowing if there are any rulings on this in the area of your hypothetical protest before heading out. But, unlawful or not, you'll probably find that most police forces aren't too scared of a fine or lawsuit down the track if it means they can put down a protest that threatens the status quo they're employed to maintain. However, in some areas, police are even required to allow protesters access to water, bathrooms, and medical aid upon request. And even though they'll uh, most likely deny thing. access to all of the second, above, I just to say, you should like, always... Uh, it's a funny thing, um, uh, Tim Tim's hypothetical dystopian cyberpunk street battle uh, framing is part of the inspiration for uh, some of the ways that we do Red Planet. <laughs> like, that's <laughs> yeah, part yeah. of the ways that I was like, hmm, interesting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I love, um, there's a lot of people in the chat saying, you know, like, oh yeah, this is, you know, something that happened to us or like, um, you know, like uh, other people saying like, oh yeah, I've heard of being boxed in and stuff like that. Right. There's, mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like there's, if you've been to one of these kind of situations, you probably, you know, you might, after seeing this or after being familiar with the concept, you probably be like, oh shit, that's exactly what they were trying to do to us. Right. Mm -hmm. It's always, yeah, it's um, always really like, um, validating to know that like you weren't just like losing your mind when you saw cops do yeah, this because yeah. they will gaslight you as well as tear yeah. gas you but they'll also gaslight you yeah. after they tear gas you in this situation by being like no no you were aggressive we had to it's like no this is like a thing that you do it's like a yeah, it's totally. like a systemic you you yeah the thing we're watching it's, yeah it's cathartic yeah. right because it's just like you know the the yeah yeah like you say it's a i mean yeah they they abuse the public and then it's like feels good to know that other people actually know what you're talking about mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. all right, right should we carry we... on yeah let's go back in. however in some areas Oop. 
Police are even required to allow protesters access to water, bathrooms, and medical aid upon request. And even though they'll most likely deny access to all of the above, you should always know your rights for any leverage that you can get. She's fucking crazy, this video. Being able to identify possible kettle points is it's crucial to avoid, which is why knowledge of the area is important. This is how small groups of local protesters have managed to hold out against overwhelming numbers from police forces and right-wing extremist groups all over the world. Things you should look out for include tunnels, bridges, and narrow streets. But a sufficiently resourced apartment could potentially deploy these strategies anywhere. So the best thing is to know your surroundings, and if your protest has any form of organized leadership, they need to communicate clearly and have multiple different routes and contingency plans. Keep in mind that police will sometimes set up a fake kettle in a suboptimal location in order to steer protesters away from it and into an ambush or strategically more advantageous position. A suboptimal kettle location could be anything from a busy intersection with plenty of street and pedestrian traffic to somewhere too close to a building or facility that could be a possible target for protesters. If you find yourself in a kettle, the best thing you can do is remain calm and coordinate with those around you. Most of the time, these situations are going to be a waiting game, and like any kind of siege, supplies are important, so you need to know if anyone around you has any special needs to be aware of. This could be anything from food, water and sunblock, to medical needs like insulin and ventolin. Going back to World War II and the Kiel und Kessel, the name Kessel Fever was given to the kind of intense psychological stress felt by the people trapped inside one of these maneuvers, which led to people not only escalating the violence against their captors, but sometimes turning on each other in desperation, which is why it's important to look out for each other and keep morale up in these situations. In a war zone, breaking a kettle is an extremely difficult task. But if you are unable to wait it out or are under heavy fire, the key to breaking these maneuvers is generally to search the perimeter of the kettle for weak points, whether it's from the encircling force being spread too thin, possibly because you've created a diversion somewhere else, or to exploit some kind of feature of the terrain to your advantage, which is obviously where local knowledge is important. So, if you can find a weak spot, you then need to focus all of your efforts in that single spot to break through and either escape or reopen and maintain a supply line. That is, if you don't have any additional forces to help you by flanking the encircling army from the outside. Now, hopefully you'll never have to actually use any of these tactics in a war zone, but many protests have been hamstrung because people weren't able to spot these traps until it was too late. So, hopefully, now that you know what a kettle is and how to spot one, that won't be you because you'll be keeping an eye out for yourself and for your comrades. Yeah, so fucking Better cool. living, everyone. Mm -hmm. This has been Tim from Conquest of Dread with yeah, How to Survive and Thrive sure. in a Hypothetical Dystopian Street. Are you planning to make this a series, Tim? Yeah, well, I mean, like, I'm planning on doing more. Um, mm -hmm. I don't, I'm not, like... Yeah, like, I've got a bunch of other ones that I think could fit into this kind of series, but uh, as opposed to, like, making, like, a whole run of them, I think just, you know, every now and then I might just revisit this kind of, you know, hypothetical street battle sort of thing. Um, yeah, 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 there's other stuff, but um, it's hard. There was, like, so much stuff that I cut from that one, because I was like, is that kind of, like, inciting something? <laughs> or, like, that is, is that too much, like, yeah. like, yeah, 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 like... And so I, I, and I think it, it was reflect in a lot of the comments, um, a lot of people were like, yeah, this is really cool because it's, um, it's not trying to encourage anyone to do any like Rambo shit. And it's right, not like, yeah, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. like telling people to go out and like, you know, like buy weapons or like anything yeah, like totally, that. Yeah. And I mean, there's, there's definitely some stuff that I cut out of there because I was like, this would probably get you in trouble. Right. You know, yeah, and I don't want sure. anyone to be like, oh, I got, you know, whatever. But um, we can probably talk with Anansi about like where the line is for stuff like that, you know? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.
Um, so Anansi, when I told you uh, I was keen to get you on the show, you said there was a there was something to do with Ketling that you thought was unusual that yes. you wanted to actually talk about, and yeah. I've been I've been just like itching to have you tell Tim and about that, and for me to, be able yes. to watch this conversation um, the whole time. So please tell us I, about that. I actually wanted to say um, uh, earlier, Tim, when I first came on, that I, I saw your video on um, on Ketling. It was really good. Uh, oh, also really good. really well made. Um, and it was, it was, I was really excited when I watched it because it was like word for word exactly right. my experience actually having oh, nice. been kettled. Um, yeah, you know, we had some I don't know if, um, saying that they, you know, kind of had yeah. the same experience. I don't, I don't know if, um, if anyone in the, in the chat or in, in this group uh, remem- knows that this happened, like remembers this. But um, during the 2020, 2020 protests, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm stuttering a little bit. You're so fine. Sorry, like, this this story does involve a bit of trauma and it like does oh, kind of difficult okay. to speak. But um, uh, yeah, this, during the twenty twenty protests, um, on August twenty sixth, um, uh, during a protest in DTLA, a bunch of protesters got trapped um by the cops in the um Third Street Tunnel in downtown Los Angeles. Oh, um, the tunnel, and they yeah. literally, yeah, they literally like, they were marching through the tunnel and um the cops like popped popped um up behind them and then when they tried to run through the tunnel, they popped on the other side and yeah. locked us in and um. I don't remember exactly um, how long you were in there for, but basically exactly how you just, the process you described in the video, they like locked us in, they like, you know, tightened up, tightened up on us to increase pressure. They like, they started beating and shooting people and like were denying people medical care. Um, And, you know, they were doing that whole thing. It got to the point where there was so much panic in the crowd that people ended up getting trampled. Like, um, I would say like, I literally was not, I was knocked over and like trampled by people because like the police were pointing guns their guns at everyone and people were like backing into the walls screaming yeah, trying absolutely. to get get away and it just became this whole thing and then like you said like um like you said in the video um eventually they start letting people go like slowly over time releasing the pressure like a kettle which is i guess where the name comes from um but one, one of the things that that happens during that process that um like i mentioned in the video like i don't know if uh, if other people who have like talked about kettles talks about this but like like mass systemic like sexual assaults by cops happen when oh, they yeah. when yeah, they're absolutely. releasing people from these cells because they're searching every single person Patting them and down um and... it yeah and it, it got to a point um here in la where like among the protesting community people kind of know instinctively or not even instinctively like, people talk about this but they also know instinctively like if you're trans and you get arrested yeah. by lapd at a protest like you're going to get assaulted like it's going yeah. to happen and I like I'm like speaking from my own experience. It's happened to me like three times at this point. It, it's a, it's just something like accept is a possibility. Yeah. But it's like a, it's like a systemic kind of um, torture that they're trying to enact. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's um like uh yeah, I didn't actually mention that in the video. I should have <clears throat> mentioned that. That is something that um someone did mention in a YouTube comment afterwards that um they had experience with that as well. Um yeah, there was actually a couple of really good uh YouTube comments afterwards about things that I didn't mention or like there was a couple things that I kind of cut out because I thought maybe it was too, you know, too far away, but um yeah, that was definitely one of the things that I didn't even um I didn't even think of obviously that's outside of my experience just being a you know uh, a cis dude but um another one was that um uh which is a really good point is that actually calling out and yelling out like hey we're being kettled or like there's a kettle or something like that is actually really um a bad idea because that makes people panic and then people fucking you know start running yeah, and then, like-, like what happened with um, you you know like for people falling over each other getting trampled yeah because getting trampled isn't like that's the thing where they're like oh we didn't hurt these people you know whatever like we just you know mm. provided the perfect situation for them to hurt you know to get hurt and things like that so um yeah there's a lot of stuff like that where it's like you think it's all gonna be like you know the police like you know getting into yeah. batons and trying to crack heads or whatever like that but there's like so much more that is still like assault, still violence, and everything. Yeah, it, it, a a lot of a lot of stuff happens like when when that process starts. It, it yeah. and, and it, it leaves like such a notable trauma on a community. Like I remember, um, like for months after um after the tunnel, like people people would get too scared to be like march under an underpass. Like if there was any yeah. sort of if there if we if people got into any sort of situation or like ended up on any street where a kettle could possibly happen. The entire crowd collectively would just like freeze and become confused and yeah, like not know. know not know what to um, what to do because it, it leave people it leave, just left people like so scared like one of the like i um 
also have experience with like situations where the police have attempted to start a kettle and then people have actually like managed to stop it or escape it yeah um yeah. in a lot of different ways like one of the hmm. first of all um one of the first one of the first ways that people can avoid getting kettled is just to keep moving yeah, yeah. like like there's there's often um i've like i've seen on the ground there's this conflict where people will want to like stop and occupy an area for an amount of time just like make noise there and, or, and do whatever or will want to like have approaches where they like come to this one area and they all camp out and they all sit in this one area but like doing those things invites situations yeah. where you're encircled and you know and like enacted mass violence upon the best yeah. the best kind of way to avoid that sort of danger and approaches is just to keep moving you know Absolutely. like uh, and especially like moving in unpredictable ways because a lot yeah. of times what's happening is the police are trying to find an optimal point in the march where they can intercept yeah. and then start a battle that yeah yeah and if you um yeah. and if you um are you know into I mean, a protest sometimes you'll even see the like where the police have anticipated people will travel and they'll set up like even if it's yeah. not like a full roadblock but they'll get ready to you know be like okay if they come up this way we can quickly deploy this like before the um the BLM march of it, exactly yeah, the big one um uh, me and a friend of mine um uh who drove in we kind of were just looking for somewhere to park up and we saw a bunch of these streets and it was like so mm. if you were walking down queen street the main kind of city central street you wouldn't see them but these little kind of you know the streets that come off the side and just around the corner there'd be like a mm -hmm. couple of cops waiting there or you know like just something like that you know just and all yeah. around all these little laneways and everything like that so it's like and they they want to um you know like they are, they are trying to deny these little ways you know like these little pathways yeah they're, they're trying to like lead you there. into a trap exactly yeah yeah yeah. they're, 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 they're like they're like hurting you kind of they're trying yeah, to yeah. hurt you and it um that's why like uh, a really like underrated um protest role is the scout like there's uh there's the situations where i've seen people like like people, the people on skateboards, right, can like will like skate ahead of the entire march and like be like three or four streets ahead, and like yeah. walk like can see where the police are like on the corner waiting, and then warn people ahead of time, and then people can make like that unpredictable turn and end up somewhere else, and the police aren't aware. It's like that that there's that there's that chance if you're really paying attention and looking for it to to move it move in such a way that you you cannot be encircled, like you're too unpredictable. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and that's, and that, that's also, one of the advantages um, like the people have. And stuff. Yeah, exactly. That's and that's yeah. where knowing your environment really well is extremely important because you can't do that if you're not paying attention enough to your area where like you know where you are. Yeah, yeah, and cool. you, and, and you have more advantage than people. People have more advantage than you think because they're on foot and you know like the cops are like following you in like a convoy of cars. Yeah, you know if you know yeah, you yeah. know the area, you can you can move you can move like in ways that they can't even follow because like they can't go down a certain kind of alleyway or they can't, you know, jump a fence or do all these different sorts of things. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, someone's saying that, um, Oh, it's rinky dick. Okay, cool. Yeah. Rinky dick is saying, um, in the 2010s anti uni fees protests in the UK, they just had to just keep moving. And, um, the average age of the protesters was a lot younger. So, um, you know, there were a lot of older people, yeah, pretty dedicated to keeping 11 to 16 year olds yeah. kids not getting kettled. And that's the thing, because like a lot of the time you'll go to um, like a march or something like that, and there's going to be some young kids there. And yeah, you know, like a lot of the time they can be like really excited. Like what I was talking and, about and earlier that's... when, yeah, it's like kids will do like stupid stuff just mm -hmm. because they're kids and they're excited and there's like a atmosphere and stuff. So you have to yeah. really be looking out for people like that. Yeah, I, I remember. I remember one night where people marched like seven, seven to ten miles in a single night, just, yeah, wow. just walking constantly, just never stopped, stopped moving, and just like outmaneuvering yeah. um, blue signs and stuff the entire time, like, it, like just nonstop. It's it's exhausting, but it um it is also very impressive to see. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, it's um it is uh interesting the um the way that cops approach tactics even though like they yeah they do really approach it like you know like kind of like a battle or something like that but it tends to be very formulaic um like all across the world you know like it's not often that um you see anything like groundbreaking like there tends to be like a bag of tricks that they've got and they usually stick to it and aside from that um i think another thing that's really important is actually 
knowing. And you can look at it a lot of the time. Um, you can find out directly from police department websites or even just from the mm -hmm. media what equipment they actually have. Um, it is like, you know, some of them, like, they will just brag about, like, oh, we have these now or whatever. Yeah. Sometimes people have set up websites to say, like, hey, look, the police just got approved funding for buying, you know, 10 of these or whatever like that. So aside from the tactics, it's actually really um, important to know what they bring in with them because, you know, yeah. like, this could be anything from, like, you know, like, vehicles to, um, you know, like, what kind of, like, riot gear they've got, what kind of, like, if they're shooting out tear gas canisters and robot things like that, dogs. what particularly, yeah, yeah, robot dogs, that's a thing now, right? But, you know, like, knowing, like, what kind of, like, um, tear gas or pepper spray they're using because, um, yeah. you know, like, obviously there's, there's all these different things um, and, you know, like, a lot of people, like, there's a lot of people I've seen online talking about like okay if you get sprayed this is what you do and they'll say like mm -hmm. okay you gotta pour milk in your eyes or something like that but like a lot of these things it's very different depending on what you know what they've sprayed you with yeah. what kind of gas it is and all this kind of stuff and um you know like if it's the wrong if it's the wrong kind of pepper spray if you pour milk in your eyes it's gonna make it worse the, and it's gonna the, permanently the best blind thing you. the best thing to do like you like never like never there's just never use milk at all yeah, is for no, one yeah, just like no, no, there, there is there is no there is no situation that, um that you will ever encounter on the ground where pouring yeah. milk on someone is the solution always just yeah. use regular water just regular yeah, just water no there's water. nothing yeah. nothing works better than just water yeah. because like, I, like you will you will mess up someone's eyes pouring milk yeah. in their eyes and like I, and even then it doesn't really help that much and yeah. also it's easier to get water than it is to get milk. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. And to, and to like carry around a gallon of milk. Exactly. Yeah, this yeah, is yeah, like yeah. this is maybe an unnecessary derail, but the the misconception comes from the fact that spice can be better displaced with milk yeah. than water. Yeah, yeah, even yeah. that's not just, exactly true. Like even that spice on your true. tongue is like capsaicinoids, and then like milk yeah, yeah. contains them, and then it displaces yeah. the chemicals. But that's not like. Pepper spray isn't just like spices in your eyes. Like, yeah, it's, it's, it's not just it's, like spice. It's, it's, it's just, just like spicy boring. air. That's all it is. <laughs> it's, it's like it's like air. literally like the same, some of the same components in like tear gas. Yeah, yeah right. it's it's more complicated than that. Exactly. Like, that's why, that's why like chat, watching. Pixel... Oh, yeah, I was gonna say Pixel Book has pointed out that milk isn't vegan either. So you know, <laughs> like, that's right. exactly. Like, imagine Very making bad. the purpose yeah. of being like asking someone like, "Oh wait, are you vegan?" Oh shit. <laughs> uh, exactly. oh, uh, yeah, i've got some oat milk instead is that yeah. <laughs> it's also, still milk right definitely um, just a derail again but baked alaska absolutely maced himself can we just have that on uh, record oh, well yes. i wanted and to say maced himself like I, yeah uh, oh yeah <laughs> i wanted to say earlier that the reminding um just remembering people using wrong things to mm. to remedy uh, pepper spray. I just had a, like a fond memory of the January sixth insurrection, where like oh, someone was told that if they put an onion in their eye, it <laughs> will make pepper spray better. <laughs> and this child was like rubbing an onion in oh, her no. eye. It was the funniest oh, funny no. shit. Let me try and find it real quick. I'll give it to you. <laughs> That's actually um, uh, also speaking of using wrong things. Like we brought up the uh, the traffic cones on the tear gas canisters before uh, for the for the Hong Kong thing. Um, yeah, there was actually a really good breakdown from Rebecca Watson, skeptic, about like misinformation that was being shared about what those people did. I'll try and find a link and put it in a chat. But uh, basically, a lot of people were sharing a certain like uh, I, I don't remember the details of it. I'll get a link and then we'll see. But like. Um, Basically, what people were sharing and saying that Hong Kong protesters had been doing would turn the canister into a bomb, and um, and so she breaks down like what you should do instead and, and why that was wrong. Uh, yeah. So mm -hmm. worthwhile, yeah. like really educating yeah, you, yourself about that stuff. Yeah, you have to be, be careful watching some some like videos and stuff online trying to give you tips because they can give you some bad information. But every now and then, you do see um, see something cool. Um, if, if I can talk about kettles again for a second, I did actually remember um, there was a, a, a thing I saw one time where as the kettle was forming, in this particular case, the protesters had to like, have it shields. And as the kettle was forming, they um, they ran up, all the shields ran up and then formed a wall on the corner of the street before the police could close, close it off. And then the entire crowd filtered between the shield and the wall and then and um, escaped onto another street and then just ran away. 
yeah, and there, nice. there's a situation where they were able to, they were able to like pop the like pop the kettle open and like get like right in the cop's face yep. form the wall and then escape. It was just very impressive, like quick thinking. I'd never really seen that happen before. So it was, yeah, just, it was yeah. just kind of a cool thing to experience. Yeah, totally. That's like fast thinking and good teamwork and everything like that. Yeah, awesome. really so, um, good yeah, teamwork. Like shields are another thing, right? Because yeah, showing up with a shield obviously like you know can be used against you as like this is a person that is you know using like a weapon yeah. or whatever because they'll, they'll turn it they'll you know define weapons they, they can anything. they can try to hit you with a shield charge like here, here in la they have yeah. a charge specifically for a shield oh, wow there's yeah. like there's like technicalities to it though like i've seen yeah. some people get around it by like making making their shields out of like water bottles and stuff that they've taped together yeah. because the rules like oh it's if it's made of like a certain kind of cardboard if it's made of like a certain thickness of wood then you catch a charge but if it's not like you can get by on it and then they also also don't always tend to stick as charges either mm. um they're just uh not really sure why but like it, it, it it's one of those things where you have to like weigh the the risk yeah, yeah. oh we don't have Obviously, to watch the rebecca watson thing now i was just sharing it so we have the link like uh mm -hmm. around oh yeah cool there's um and also like shields what, what happened uh, there's all different kinds of shields for different things like um you know like a shield that might be good and like a you know when you're like facing off against like riot cops or something like that might not be the best thing for like deflecting you know like uh tear gas or anything like that like i've seen videos of people like a really common shield that a lot of people make is where they cut a big um big plastic barrel in yeah. half you know so they've got like a round kind of thing and you just put a handle on the back which you can just bolt on you know just get a handle from like mitre 10 or whatever bolt it on the back super easy but because it's round like that um you know really good if you're like you know bashing against people or whatever but if a grenade hits into yeah. it it's gonna bounce beside you as opposed yeah. to like back whereas like a flat one you know you could kind of like the apparently like i've yeah. you know done this myself our cops don't have these but the trick for flat shields is to angle them slightly up so that they kind of like bounce away or whatever they yeah. lose momentum by the time they kind of hit the ground whereas like if you angle them to the side they might hit a friend or you know like you yeah just, uh, you gotta be really really careful about what's happening there yeah an underrated an underrated um option for like for that is just like a, a skateboard or a longboard because like for one oh, yeah. it, it it if it can offer you more sort of protection than you think and yeah. you also like the main thing you're going you're wanting to protect anyway is your face and your head and that's more than enough to do that but it also gives you more mobility because you can you can like stop and like protect yourself from something if you need to and like skate away yeah, yeah so like yeah, um you, it, it gives you it gives you more options to do to kind of fill different roles you can you can be scouting ahead and like seeing what's going on and then also like have something to protect yourself if you get shot at um and you know you just like pop an ollie and just be exactly and then, and then it's also <laughs> it's also technically not a shield so you won't catch a shield charge for having yeah 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 uh, speaking and, of um, shields does anyone know if uh if those fucking taser shields ever started being in circulation because like the oh, cops I, saw were, like, I don't know i like, uh, i just want to catch the chat up first like if I'm not even gonna lie. I really want one. Just per <laughs> per just personally for myself, I really want one. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, just so that you can win at laser tag. Um, not even to do. I just want to have one, just so I can play with it like a toy. Uh, yeah, yeah. If the chat don't know about this, the 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 cops. Uh, it might even have been LAPD. I saw posting about this, but like, um, the some cop department were boasting about like a patent and a, a thing in development that was, was like in, uh, laser Memphis. shield. Yeah. Memphis yeah. shit, yeah. Uh, yeah. which was like uh, it was plastic but then it's got like metal panels on the front to like yeah. tape to like tase people so while they're barging people they can also like shock them um, which is just like you know fantastically uh, disgusting yeah. cop shit uh, but somebody pointed out that if you just had like some tang or whatever and you choked <laughs> it on that that <laughs> That like I think yeah. I think the price tag on it was like twenty four hundred dollars something fucking obscene would be mm. completely ruined forever like unfixable mm. if you yeah. if you just put some tang on it so like um just you know that's an interesting tidbit in case anybody ever encounters one of those right <laughs> so um what um Prince Infidel is saying in the chat is right they're actually um something that was invented for prison riots Makes and sense. they've been around for a couple decades but the ones that were in those videos are just like a particularly modern kind of iteration of right. the design right. um and you know because it's like so it's the same thing with um I think like the whole like rubber bullets thing started with prison riots as well because for some reason 
people feel like it's okay to use a lot of these things on prisoners but then you know when like they start bringing them out onto the street to you know like to actually use on like well you know well adjusted members of society or whatever like that it becomes a whole other thing like i mean my personal uh position is that they're fucking horrific to use on absolutely anyone and that right. you yeah. know like <laughs> prisoners um, deserve better than that but um yeah for some reason like a lot of people get really shocked being like oh my god they're using these on people people you know mm. but um no Not yeah, like yeah the, they're the throwaway um, people but like the real street yeah, like, yeah exactly. the street people? like mi- it's that like mr incredible meme where it's like liberals talking about uh, uh cop violence on uh on 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 everybody else liberals talking about cop violence on prisoners like it's just like <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know yeah absolutely but um so apparently that they did get a lot of pushback from um from you know like the general public or whatever about using those mm. shields in public and they ended up you know kind of not it was great or maybe probably not um get rid of them but i can imagine they're probably sitting in a storeroom for right. a rainy day or something like that but um waiting for the yeah, right I, psych path to be like fuck yeah let's go you know yeah, you're looking for the right um, civil rights issue to, you know. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, but yeah, so yeah, like those are a thing. And it's like, I, I think it's important to like remember that like, you know, these things are still, they still use them. They just use them on people in prisons that you might not see about, you know, might not hear about or whatever. Exactly. So, um, and someone else is actually saying, uh, oh yeah, um, Rob Rousseau actually who's in the chat you know hi rob Rousseau, um is saying uh yeah like uh, a lot of these like rubber bullets and all these like canisters and stuff are supposed to be used by ricocheting off the ground yeah um, and that's their way of kind of you know like uh getting around it. you know they say like oh it's it's okay that these pa- these have like a ridiculous amount of power and can shoot like so fast because we're actually bouncing them off the ground whereas in in real life they're actually not yeah, but, of course you know, not. Like, well, yeah. If, if they were if they were saying, oh, we're firing them, you know, directly at people or whatever, people would be like, wow, that's really powerful, you know, like, you guys should be doing that. But, um, yeah, no. It's, uh, it's absolutely, um, yeah, how they get around powering them, oh, making them so powerful. Um, right. We're coming up on the end of the stream, though. Should probably, yeah, like, so um, we should probably get into the homework and all of this, so... Anansi, uh, where can people find you before we do that? Uh, before you, you know, I'm thinking maybe Anansi, you you plug your stuff, head off, and then we'll do our homework section because you don't have to be around for that. You know, it's it's boring. <laughs> and also, Anansi, um, I really want to thank you, you for you're coming cutting on. Cutting out for me a little bit, but I think I heard, I think I heard you oh, say okay. like, where can people find me. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm not sure if you can hear me right now. But, yeah, um... I can hear you. Can you okay, hear us? cool, cool. Can you hear me? Yep. Yeah. Okay, yep. cool. Yeah, you were cutting out for me for a second, but um, okay. you said where oh, can people yeah. find me? Yes, um, I have my YouTube channel, uh, obviously at Anansi's, Anansi's Library, and then I also am on Twitter, also at <laughs> Anansi's Library. Um, and then I just talk about books and uh, different like read materials. Right now, I'm working on a video on George Jackson and the book Blood in My Eye, which I will say is something that I I highly recommend for anyone to read. I think it has a lot of really interesting ideas on like, um like urban urban like urban uh urban guerrilla warfare and like just um socialism and like different ideas in general but i think he 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 talks a lot about protest movements in a way that i think is really interesting and in a way that i think is useful for anyone of any kind of tendency um i think i think i feel like george jackson gets a little bit overlooked um when it comes to like different forms of theory but that's just because uh i'm like emotionally attached to this book I was. This was one of the first pieces of theory I really got into, and I was reading it during the 2020 protests while a lot of like dangerous stuff was happening. So it kind of was just like hitting emotionally in a really heavy way. But yeah, I highly recommend this book. I'm I'm excited to be working on a video. And uh, yeah, yeah, that's cool. that's me. Incredible. Awesome. It's a pleasure to have you. Yeah, and I wanted Nicole, to. you wanted to. Go yeah, on, I just wanted to say thank you so much for coming on to the the show. It was really educational. I know for all of us, yeah, thank for you me for especially. Me. And I also wanted to thank you for um, talking about some traumatic stuff that probably wasn't yeah. very easy. And it's especially, it, I, I don't, I, I'm very used to talking about things in front of a crowd and it's still not easy. So I can't imagine how much that like took for you to talk about that stuff. 
but it really i appreciate yeah. it and i think um i think i can speak for chat and say that we all very much appreciate the insight you brought as well as opening up to us and being vulnerable and sharing with us some of you know the not glamorous kind of like traumatic yeah, stuff absolutely. associated with this because it's important that especially our trans comrades understand this stuff yeah so thank you thank you um I'm, I'm, I'm glad i was able to come on yeah and I'm, I'm probably gonna like just take all my notes and like put them up on my patreon or something for free for everyone to be able to see just because so that they're somewhere because we weren't i wasn't able to like say everything that i wanted to say and i wrote a lot of yeah, stuff yeah no it's a really but, great um, shit too that'd be yeah. i think a lot of people would love that so yeah just so just so people know i'll like i'll like post the link on twitter when i do it but, um, awesome, nice. awesome. Yeah, I, I yeah. think especially like because because we didn't cover everything, and if you come up, if you have like more to say in future, maybe we'll do more episodes on project yeah. tactics because there just is a lot yeah. to discuss actually. So, uh, you know, look forward to having. Yeah, you I'm back always on. I'm always down to come on, um, and like I'll I'll talk about whatever book I happen to be reading, um, <laughs> nice. or whatever. But um, yeah, I, I really appreciate being able to come on. So thank you. Nice, cool. awesome. We love having you. Yeah, yeah. Right. thanks, All babe. Right.